Welcome to our review on seismic waves. First thing we need to understand then is a little bit about the structure of the Earth. So our Earth's surface is actually constructed of plates of rock. Now wherever those plates meet we've got this thing called a fault line. And because these big plates that make up the surface of the Earth are always moving, then they can push and grind up against each other. Now if our plates are pushing against each other then we can build up pressure in the plate and then finally when that pressure gets to a certain point it's going to cause those plates to slip past very quickly and then that means we get a very rapid shifting of the plates and as a result we generate an earthquake. When an earthquake occurs we get these shock waves being sent out called seismic waves. Now these seismic waves can cause some pretty serious damage when they reach the surface of the earth. So in the images at the bottom there you can see the far left hand side the effect on some of the buildings where literally they can be completely toppled and the middle picture there just shows you the effect it can have where the surface has moved. So you can see a road literally has kind of split in half. So one half much higher than the other half. It's not meant to be like that. If an earthquake actually happens under the sea then we can actually see a tsunami as a result and obviously the most recent one was out in Japan and then before that there was the one in Indonesia on Boxing Day and these are incredibly destructive as you can see from the image in the bottom right there that's the aftermath of the Japanese tsunami there where you've got houses and ships just lying right next to each other where all of that water came in with such force that it literally destroys everything in its path when we think about these seismic waves then there are two types. The first one are P waves. Now P waves travel through solids and liquids and they travel very fast. Because their vibrations occur in the same direction as the movement of the wave these are longitudinal waves. The second type of seismic wave produced by an earthquake is an S wave. Now S waves can only travel through a solid so think S for solid. These do travel fast but not as fast as our P waves and the other difference is that they're a transverse wave because their vibrations are at 90 degrees to the direction in which the wave is moving. In order to study earthquakes then we use a seismometer to actually detect the seismic waves and the image that we generate is called a seismograph. So what we can actually do is study these seismographs and identify any particular patterns and try to understand earthquakes a little bit more. One of the things that earthquakes has actually given to us is a greater understanding of the actual structure of the earth. So after an earthquake we will only detect S waves at certain places on the earth's surface. Now this is because the scientists actually believe the earth has a molten iron outer core. So if you look at the image down there what we can see is we've got our source of our earthquake right at the very top there and from that point we're going to be sending out both S waves and P waves. Now P waves can travel through solids and liquids, S waves through solids only. So we're going to be able to detect those P waves all over the surface of the earth but the S waves which are only able to travel through a solid are only detected where you can see those yellowish coloured lines. So you can see the ones that would have had to have traveled through the very center of the earth there are not detected in the lower part. So that's because there must be a liquid which prevents them traveling. 